Question 2 says, uh, ABC Limited has uh, opted to adopt a decision support system in the restructure of its business processes. State three moral dimensions the company will consider from this move. So remember, we have very many dimensions. We have uh, legal dimensions, we have moral dimensions, we have ethical dimensions. But the, this question act, uh, requires us to talk about the moral dimension. So the first moral dimension that this uh, company would consider is what we call information rights and obligations. Information rights and obligations. So uh, information rights and obligations are the rights that, uh, uh, that guards uh, any information within an organization. And what are the obligation requirements or what, what is expected of the companies, organizations that hold uh, this particular information. And in this case, we are talking about a decision support system. The second, uh, the second moral dimension is what we call property rights and, 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 and obligation. So the first one was information rights. This is property rights. So we have uh, uh, properties within uh, this organization that also have rights, for example, ownership rights, and these uh, rights and obligations are required to be implemented by the organization such as uh, ABC Limited that has opted to, uh, to adopt this type of decision support system. And uh, uh, the last one is what we call accountability and control. So the organization is expected to be accountable. So accountability uh, deals with uh, uh, being able to, to give an account or to give uh, uh, any required information at a particular time and to control who and who, but uh, which particular person is able to access this information at a particular time? You are able to give account. You are able to to, to give uh, the, the relevant direction on which particular person access the information at which particular time. So those are the moral, uh, the major three major moral dimensions that is this company ABC will consider adopting. So the first question deals with moral dimension. But the second question is with legal issues. So legal issues are issues that deal with the law. Remember, each and every nation has particular set of laws that uh, uh, pertain to information. So if you go to the United States, the laws might be different from Kenya or from Netherlands. So the laws are different, but they are anchored in the legal document that these particular nations use. So in this case, question, we are required to outline three legal issues that these companies like to consider. The same same company A, B, C, and T, which is adopting a decision support system. So the first one is what we call the licensing. So this system must have a license. So a license is, uh, is, is obtained from a particular country to give you authority of using this particular, uh, sub, uh, this particular system. And again, you, you, you can make this system yours by uh, uh, applying or complying to what we call the patent laws. So uh, these, the patent laws will ensure that no other organization can claim this decision support system or no other organization can take this decision support system and maybe change part of it and uh, uh, maybe uh, they, they claim ownership of this particular decision support system. The last one is what we call security. So, the the, the, the the organization must ensure that this decision support system is secure. Security in, in terms of the information that is being stored. How will the people using this support system or the, the stakeholders ensure that uh, everything that is, or the information that is stored within this decision support system is secure, that no other organization can, or another person who is having uh, uh, maybe uh, other reasons cannot access this uh, system and interfere with it. So those are legal and also uh, moral dimensions that uh, the company must uh, look or take into account seriously when they want to adopt any decision support system. Question C requires us to give, or it says, outline four possible causes of ICT project failure. To software development. So when software is being developed within an organization, it passes through different stages. We talk about LDC or software development life cycle. So when the software is passing through different uh, cycles, 
uh, sometimes it, it does not come out well. Sometimes we find that there is a failure, maybe in the implementation part. There could be a, a, a failure in the feasibility study part. There could be a, a failure in developing a prototype. So the question is saying, why is it? Why is it that these failures come about when these projects are being launched or they are being organized within an organization? The first answer is lack of resource planning. So sometimes we do not uh, we do not look uh, we do not take into account which particular resources, including finances, that will be needed to complete this uh, project, and therefore it may fail midway between the uh, conception and the implementation. So there need to be a proper research or on or, or, or what we call the feasibility study to come out uh, with with all the resources that will be needed, including the human resource, the accounts or the finances that will be needed, and even the data, the type of data that will be uh, required. Again, we have unclear goals and obligations. If the goals are not clear why the uh, project is needed, then most obviously this project will fail because we will be chasing a goal that is not known by any other stakeholder that needs this resource. So we must have clear goals. The third one is lack of project visibility. So sometimes we do a project, but uh, we don't have a prototype. We, do, we, don't, we have not set a particular uh, outline that will be followed properly to ensure that these projects come out as we want. And again, we have what we call communication gaps. We say that project is not done by one individual. There are very many people involved at different stages of uh, software or any other project development. There must be communication from the engineers, from the designers, and even those who collect data from the field. If there is a gap that exists between these partners, then uh, most, most obviously this project will fail to see the light of the day. Lastly, we have unrealistic expectations. We could have very big expectations or very, very uh, minute expectations. So if the expectations are not real, uh, then we are probably going to fail because uh, we are chasing after uh, a wind. So for any project within an organization to succeed, there must be realistic expectations. The question B says, explain the term requirement elicitation in relation to software development. So uh, what is requirement elicitation? It's the practice of researching and discovering the requirements of a system from users, customers, and stakeholders. So before uh, we, 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 we make a software or before we start the process of making a software, we must do research, we must find out, we must go to stakeholders, we must go to the customers and find out what are their preferences, what are the gaps that they are seeing in the previous system and what are the components that they need or what are the components that they need added to the existing system. So we must find out to know if there is need to develop a new system or we can patch up the other system and just use it as it is. So that is what we call requirement elicitation, where you go to the stakeholders, you go to the users and customers and find out what they need or what they think about the system. Question E says, explain two requirement elicitation techniques. So how do you get this information from these stakeholders that we are talking about? Remember we talked about the users, or the people we call the end users. These are the people that will use the system that you are implementing, or the system that you are, you are trying to make. How do you get this information from the stakeholders? So the stakeholders could be uh, the, the people above you, the, 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 the organizers or the sponsors of the system. They need to give you information. So the requirement and the same techniques that involve this is one is interviews. You can go to the field, and get two or three users and then give them interviews. So you can organize with them a particular time. There are different, different types of interviews, but these interviews are meant to get or to extract information from these users to you. Another one is observation. So observation is where you go directly to the ground. You go to, uh, to the users yourself or to the systems that they use and you, you, you tend to know or you tend to observe with your eyes what could be the gaps or what could be some areas that need to be added to these particular systems or what could be uh, some of the challenges that they, these people encounter 
So this is what we call observation. There are many other ways of getting information from them. Some include questionnaires, so you just create some questions. It could be open questionnaire, closed questionnaire, and then you give it to the people. They answer and give you back and you can get information from these questionnaires. So all these uh, are, are techniques that we use. So that is uh, question number A that uh, uh, needed us to uh, give the requirement and citation techniques. Question E was saying, I like four features of a word to, uh, of a word processing program. Features of a word. So a word processing program has lots and lots of features. The first feature that we can talk about is easy type typing. Remember, the word processing program has what we call the typing area. So when you open the uh, when you open a, a word processing uh, program you will find a blank space with a cursor blinking. So this will make it very easy for you to type if you have a keyboard. The keyboard must be there, so we have the keys. So you can type because of, of the availability of a large space or a large typing area. We also have uh, we also have what we call adding or removing and copying text. So we can add text easily, we can remove text easily, we can copy text or we can even paste it elsewhere using uh, when you are dealing with a word processing program. How do you do that? You could use your mouse and also we have the menu bar where we have the first icon that has cut, paste and also uh, 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 we, we, we could have copy. We also have what we call the spell check. This feature is called spell checker. So what does the spell checker do? So the spell checker helps us to check the spelling errors or spelling mistakes that we could have. So these spelling mistakes could be automatically corrected or we could use this uh, spelling checker feature to automatically correct all the spelling mistakes or also we could also do the grammatical errors and remove them from our easily. We also do what we call bullets and numbering. This one is used to highlight maybe we have a list of items and therefore we we, we are what a, 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 a way of highlighting them so that they come out neatly. We could use bulletings, we could use numbering. Uh, there are very many bulleting uh, styles, there are very many numbering styles including italics. We also have headers and footers. So headers and footers, these are features that exist at the head and at the bottom of our work. Uh, we also have tables. We could create tables uh, in our in our word processing program. There are very many ways of creating a table, including just inserting a table or drawing a table with columns and rows. So that's also another very important feature of a word processing program that uh, helps us in doing all these things. We could also add. Uh, 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 we could add images or objects in our word processing program uh, using, remember we have pictures, uh, we, we, we use word acts and any other feature that is available there. So all those are features of word processing program.